Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the IP Bliss webinar. My name is Bill Curtis, and I'm the analyst covering industrial IoT for more insights and strategy. I'll be your moderator for the discussion today. We're here to tell you about IP Bliss. It's a new organization focused on internet protocols as the basis for building and lighting standards, hence the name IPBLIS, Building and Lighting Standards. This new group is composed of well-established standards organizations. It's really an organization of organizations. And in my experience, deep collaboration among standards organizations is pretty rare, especially when the participating organizations address the same markets, and in some cases, even compete with one another um, in, 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 uh, in some areas of technology, as is the case here. So this announcement a few weeks ago, the announcement of IP Bliss, generated quite a bit of interest in the world of building automation and industrial IoT. Uh, today, we'll be answering many of the questions that we've received from across the industry about IP Bliss. To address those questions, we have a distinguished panel on the call today representing the five founding standards organizations. We'll ask our panelists to explain the big picture, the big picture strategy behind IP Bliss to identify the specific problems that it addresses, to describe the scope and schedule of their work, and to tell us how the organization operates. So here's how we'll proceed. First, we'll ask our panelists to introduce themselves. Next, Bruno Johnson will take us through an overview of IP Bliss. And then our panel will address these most frequently asked questions. So let's get started. Uh, first, we'll introduce our panel. Andy, will you get things rolling for us, please? Sure, thank you, Bill. So uh, I'm Andy McMillan. I'm president and managing director of BACnet International. And personally, I have a long history in open systems and networked automation, starting back in office automation, further back than I want to talk about, and then industrial automation, and then these last 15 years in building automation. BACnet International is a global trade association and our purpose is to support the community of users and suppliers in successful adoption and deployment and getting the maximum value out of building automation utilizing the BACnet protocol. Our organization has joined IP Bliss because we think there's an opportunity collectively to educate the community of building owners operators about the value of IP as a platform in a multi-protocol environment. And we also think it can be a place to facilitate conversation around simplifying the user experience in complex systems built on IP and multiple protocols. So we're very happy to be here. Ron? Okay, it's me. Uh, welcome from KNX. My name is uh, Franz Kammerl. I'm working for Siemens and I'm the president of the KNX Association International. Today, I speak on behalf of uh, near to 500 KNX manufacturers from over 70 countries worldwide. KNX stands since now nearly uh, 30, 13 years uh, for interoperability of inter and interworking of more than 7,000 certified uh, uh, products and product groups. And uh, KNX is used in daily business by nearly 100,000 certified KNX system integrators worldwide. In KNX, we established almost 15 years ago with the members IP based solutions as KNX Net IP. And since three years, it, this is now also available with KNX Secure. Currently, we are developing a secure RESTful API to connect KNX even better to the Internet of Things world and are also developing a concept for IP-based field-level communication. KNX is proud to be an active part of IP Bliss initiative and I'm sure this marketing activities is the right approach towards making IP the secure backbone for building automation. Yes, KNX wish the IP Bliss initiative all the best, and we will support as much as possible to convince many manufacturers to support the initiative by joining one of the supporting organizations. And uh, now I hand over to David. 
Thanks, Franz. Uh, it's David McCall here. I'm president of the Open Connectivity Foundation. I've been involved in OCF since the start of the organization back in 2014. And from the beginning, OCF has been working to deliver secure, interoperable communications over IP in a fairly unique combination of specs, open source, and the certification program. So it should be no surprise that we're involved in IP Bliss. Um, it's right in line with everything that we support. And I'm looking forward to sharing more information about this collaboration with everyone today. Bruno? Um, I think we'll go on to Arnoff. Yeah, welcome from Thread Group. Uh, so my name is Arnold Frupp. Uh, I'm working for the lighting company Osram. I'm the standards director at Osram. In that role, I'm also uh, representing Osram at uh, the board of uh, Thread Group. And uh, here today, I'm representing uh, Thread Group. Thread Group is an organization standardizing a network layer, an IP-based network layer for low power constraint devices. Uh, which will typically be used in uh, building and home application scenarios. Uh, so we're excited of, about IP Bliss because IP Bliss is uh, an opportunity for us uh, to consolidate opinions and specifications and join forces to promote IP in buildings and uh, um, be um, a, a solid contribution uh, to introduction of more IP-based products into buildings. Yeah, hand over to Tobin. Great, thanks, Arnold. Uh, this is Tobin Richardson. I'm the president and CEO of the Zigbee Alliance, and uh, really happy to be here today to uh, uh, talk about this exciting new initiative and partnership uh, with IP Bliss and, and our sister organizations. As you probably know, the Zigbee Alliance is a, a long-standing organization focused on delivering really the infrastructure for the Internet of Things. Uh, initially through uh, Zigbee standards uh, around 15.4, and most recently, folks are probably familiar with our recent uh, announcement on uh, Project Connected Home over IP, uh, and uh, that is uh, really focused on driving home the notion of a wide infrastructure for the Internet of Things with a heavy focus on Internet protocol. Um, and because of that, uh, we are really excited to be working here with this group uh, and focused on on uh, really setting the, the right uh, structure in place for connected devices everywhere and delivering great experiences, both smart homes, smart building, industrial, and several other application areas. Um, and as Bill said at the beginning, you know, this is a, a really an unparalleled uh, partnership, but I think at this uh, point in the uh, evolution of the Internet of Things, it's critical for organizations like ours to work hand in hand to really focus on delivering the value to end consumers, uh, whether that's in the B2B space or in the consumer. Or an industrial so a really important step for our industry and uh, really happy to be working with such uh, great organizations and, and individuals thanks tobin and um my name is uh, bruno johnson i am ceo of uh, semiconductor manufacturer and communications company cascoda and uh, i am also the vice chair of marketing of the open connectivity foundation and i've been chosen to uh, present ip bliss to you before handing back to uh, our moderator, Bill. So, as Bill mentioned, IP Bliss stands for Internet Protocol Building and Lighting Standards. It's not a new organization, but rather existing organizations that have agreed to work together. And in alphabetical order, these organizations are Backnet International, KNX, the Open Connectivity Foundation, the Thread Group, and the Zigbee Alliance. The vision of IP Bliss is to make commercial buildings more responsive to the needs of users by promoting secure multi standard IP based solutions. Now, the mission of the IP Bliss uh, liaison parties is through collaboration and cooperation to educate and influence the market regarding application framework standards over internet protocol, specifically for building con connectivity. And this is really a marketing and communications organization. The goals of IP Bliss are to align on a common set of network onboarding, 
and security communication procedures to be applied in the administration of IP-based networks for building control and associated management. These common procedures are highly desirable. They ensure uniform integration of different control systems in a shared, administered, IP-based network within our buildings. And this reduces the overall network administration efforts serving our different systems. If we look at buildings today, there are many different building technologies. And these have perhaps evolved over time. So elevators may have their own set of manufacturers and control systems associated with it. Water, the delivery of energy and the monitoring of energy, the control of lighting, the control of building access and security, and the control of and delivery of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. These are all extremely important systems. However, these systems, because they have evolved separately, tend to operate within their own silos and use their own proprietary connectivity solutions. And this is highly problematic if we want to come to a more integrated building control system. Now, there is a strong trend of building control systems with IT. Lighting control, building management systems with IT convergence into a secure, all IP-based configuration. And this facilitates the Internet of Things for commercial buildings. It breaks down the barriers between the individual silos, builds automation, uh, various building automation application protocols are accessible via an IP address instead of via a uh, proprietary application protocol specific address. And this is very powerful because it allows multiple systems to be uh, controlled and communicated with together using the cloud services and the power of cloud computing and potentially even artificial intelligence and also commonly used uh, systems of control and monitoring such as those that we use every day with our apps and also with uh, regular computing systems. So the benefits of IP is that we can have a single IP backbone for all our building automation products. And this will be used Internet Protocol version 6, otherwise known as IPv6. Common security based on the strongest international standards that are already known and already used in the internet protocol. For instance, when we open our cell phone and connect back to our bank to perform our banking activities. Simplified support and administration. This is extremely important. It eases the IT's department ability to support the infrastructure with which they are responsible. And it eliminates the need for these people to have a knowledge of the particular application protocol that relates to the particular building automation products. And this allows seamless connectivity options. We can choose the best mix of wired and wireless connectivity options based on existing IP technology. This allows building installers and building designers much more flexibility and should also reduce installation costs because we can move over to wireless. And device groups and policies are also possible. Much as with a laptop, you may have a policy 
for when you remove the power from your laptop, when to shut down the screen, when to shut down the hard drive and the operating system and so on. It's similar, similarly, multi uh, disciplines can be combined together with policies to better control our buildings. And we'll look a bit more at that in a moment. And scalability. With IPv6, we have limitless scalability and cloud integration. We can start to control multiple buildings, thousands, tens of thousands of nodes at one time. And potentially, we have the possibility to develop a common semantic interpretation of data independent of the used application protocol. So let's take a look at the way that buildings uh, control systems are currently employed today. It's very much using a kind of top-down approach. We may have a lighting system using proprietary connectivity technology with a gateway to an IP-based network with some software that will control it. Similarly with our heating, ventilation and air conditioning, a gateway to the IP network and some proprietary software. And we may have other isolated networks that are not even connected to the IT infrastructure. For instance, the security systems and the fire safety systems. In this environment, if you want to use the information from the security system, for example, PIR detection to better control the delivery of heating, ventilation, air conditioning when we don't have occupancy in a room, it's very difficult to do. Now, using a top-down approach, if we try and harmonize all of these systems using one gateway and a glorified gateway, multi-protocol, and a control system for this, this is extremely difficult to do. And moreover, no one organization is particularly suited to doing it. This is a, really the core of the problem because the convergence is so complex, is so difficult, is so multifaceted, and it's global, that this is a huge problem using the top-down approach. If we take a bottom-up approach using IP-based infrastructure, all of a sudden, with a unified IP network layer, we can have our lighting, heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems, and other systems, safety, security, for example, all connected via internet protocol networking. And that means each end device has an IP address. This allows for local building control systems to seamlessly control multi-domain uh, applications at the same time to deliver a much more user-friendly and efficient use of our buildings. But it also, with appropriate security, allows the control of such systems to happen over the public internet and to use cloud control and the power of advanced computing systems and, of course, potentially artificial intelligence. So that's the introduction. Uh, IP Bliss stands for Internet Protocol for Building and Lighting Standards. Uh, BACnet, KNX, Open Connectivity Foundation, the Thread Group, and the Zigbee Alliance. So with that, I'll be handing back to Bill. Thanks for that excellent introduction uh, to IP Bliss, uh, Bruno. Um, now let's let's shift gears and ask our panel to answer some questions that are most frequently asked about IP Bliss. Let's uh, let's start with the one that I hear the most often. 
uh, Bruno gave us did a great job giving us the big picture. But um, can you guys take a step back and summarize exactly why your organizations created IP Bliss? Maybe I can give an answer. Franz Kamel speaking. Uh, okay. As you know, IP is already carrying different protocols today. So this principle can just as well also be applied for the building automation. There are lots of reasons to estimate that IP in future will become more and more the dominant protocol also in the building area of uh, in the area of building automation. By joining forces, the associations in IP Bliss can towards their members convey the same future-oriented vision to uh, converge towards using the same transport and using the same security mechanisms, regardless of the diversity of the application layer protocols or the different approaches of the different involved ecosystems towards the market. So from the marketing perspective, for the aspect of a common transport and for security, it very much makes sense to work together. Together we can, with the voice, represent all manufacturers active in the building automation domain. So far my point. Okay, uh, that all sounds good. Um, kind of a common carrier for um, uh, all of these different uh, protocols, a common denominator, if you will. But uh, will that require a new technology specification? Yeah, I don't know if I can take that question. Uh, no, it's really not the plan uh, to write new specifications here. Um, IP Bliss uh, will gather requirements from the market, <clears throat> will gather the relevant standards, performance standards, security is also a, a certain focus. Uh, um, so this information uh, from all the member organizations will be relevant and will be shared uh, and will also be used uh, for you know, a common uh, training and, uh, in, you know, information sharing uh, to the outside world. But each participating organization is really responsible for their specifications. IP Bliss is not, uh, is not a technical uh, spec writing organizations. If there are gaps identified um, through gathering this requirements and, and the, we as IP Bliss uh, think uh, there's something to do, then we will address this to the member organizations and ask the, the technical experts in the member organizations to make proposals, uh, which we then can agree on. Uh, but this is not an IP Bliss specification. This is a specification of one of the member organizations. Okay, I think I got that. Um, but, but if you take a step back, existing standards like KNX and BACnet have been around for a long time. They have a huge install base. Um, and they're already moving to IP. It, in different ways at different rates. So what will change here? How will IP Bliss um, add value here and accelerate this transition? This is uh, Andy here. Let me take this one. Um, when we think about IP and building automation protocol standards, uh, it's not just moving to IP, it's been IP for a long time. Uh, for example, a back that added IP to the specification in 1999, long time ago. IPv6 has been part of BACnet for, I think, nearly five years now. So IP is and has been used in many thousands of applications in building automation. The thing is, historically, we, I think everyone in our industry has kind of thought about IP as protocol specific. When, when we talk about BACnet over IP, we say BACnet slash IP. And so somehow IP is part of BACnet. Um, and, and so part of what we need to do is reformulate the thinking that IP is a platform and BACnet is with IP. And KNX can be with IP and other things can be with IP. And that is more a, a messaging and communication problem. Uh, it's not a technical problem. It's not even an adoption problem. Lots and lots and lots of IP is in buildings now. Um, but if we reframe the way people think about it, uh, we can move to a much more cohesive and coexistent uh, model 
for building automation, and that can only help the owners, operators, and suppliers in that industry. All right, so um, the objective really isn't to converge these application protocols, right, but, but to um, enable them to coexist and maybe converge some things that, like onboarding, we mentioned in the, in the presentation a minute ago, um, kind of essential in order to, to achieve this kind of coexistence. Um, why is that the best approach specifically for commercial building automation? I'll take that one, Bill. Uh, this is David McCall here. Um, I think we believe it's the best approach um, because it has been proven in other markets. I mean, one of the most obvious ones is computer networks. You have a vast number of applications and higher layer protocols all running over the same IP-based lower layers. And we to described there are already many application and upper layer protocols in the building automation market. Um, they often running all of their own dedicated networks, but just getting them all running over those same lower layer protocols, the IP layer is foundational to delivering a modern scalable solution. So collaborating in IP Bliss allows us to, um, first of all, support that direction for a broad range of those upper layer protocols, but also get alignment on issues like identity, onboarding, provisioning, some of the ones you mentioned, just security in general, that span the lower and upper layers. Um, you don't want to have to go through two onboarding steps uh, when you put a new device in the market, one for IP and then another one for the upper layer protocols. It'd be better if it's all uh, one thing. Um, so yeah, it's it's a common lower layer. It's foundational. Um, IPv6 is the obvious choice, and collaboration between the key standards organizations will deliver the necessary ease of use and security. Yeah, but just to clarify, to, to make sure I understand, um, the, there's no need to um, intrusively modify the existing application layer protocols, just evolve them to more of a converged uh, IP strategy. Is that correct? That's the plan. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so so um, uh, let's, let's, let's turn our attention to, um, uh, to the practical uh, aspects of, of running an organization like this. What are the, the goals and activities uh, planned for IP Bliss over the next six months? What are you, you going to do first and, and uh, how do you see this evolving over the next six or 12 months? So take that again. Um, so we want to establish that secure IP as a solid future-proof technical uh, solution. That's what we're, we're, our goal is. Um, and we'll be creating some materials to prove that, uh, looking at particularly the security requirements of what are the best fits for building Internet of Things, um, investing some possibility of proving coexistence of the IP-based technologies on the same network, um, and making sure that the basic foundational idea that we can get everything running over the same network um, and we're not going to be uh, causing any problems between the different protocols is true. Um, so it's uh, foundational stuff first <laughs> um, and make sure that the, the, the statements that we're making here today, uh, we can prove that they are correct. We all believe they are, um, but we're going to be you know, doing the work to uh, provide the evidence that the end users can have confidence in delivering a converged network. Okay. Um, some of the participating organizations, um, I guess KNX and BACnet in particular, uh, are have have a long uh, history of, uh, uh, of of working in the building automation space, and uh, the others um, kind of not as much. So uh, th does that really matter? I mean, that that that, uh, that you guys are are, um, uh, are aren't all um, that not all the members are deeply engaged in in building automation today. To uh, the question, does this matter? I could give a straight answer, and the answer is no. But I will <laughs> okay. explain it a little bit more in detail to <laughs> uh, that you can better understand what our way of thinking is. The message that all participating organizations endorse that the future is IP based on the reliable security for this domain is what matters. Whatever the share of the different organizations in the building automation market is, at the end, the customer, our customers, has the choice to decide which solution he prefers. 
So all the offering can be used in the building automation markets. No one of the organizations is purely fixed to just one market segment. And most of the members of the organizations are also active uh, with their offering in different market segments. And by this also in building automation. This should ensure that if the manufacturers of the different organizations approach the building automation market, their approach becomes unified. This is uh, the longer answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one because uh, it, it really expands the, uh, the number of companies that can, and the types of companies that can participate in these commercial applications and, and uh, give everybody uh, larger markets with fewer differences between devices. Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a really powerful statement, I think. Um, and and under, underneath all that is this idea of coexistence. Um, that is uh, um, the, the notion that, that you don't have to completely converge all the application protocols so that, that everybody does things exactly the same way. Uh, coexistence means that, uh, uh, that these different protocols can operate simultaneously on a common network backbone. So uh, how does IP, it, I, I think you've already established that IP, IP Bliss is all about that. But how are you going to go about promoting it? Because it doesn't seem to be taking off. This notion of IP migration, migration of all these different protocols, and there's, by the way, hundreds of them across all industries. Moving them to IP is taking a lot longer than some of us thought it, thought it would a few years ago. So, so how is IP Bliss going to accelerate this and promote coexistence? This is Andy, Bill. I'll take this from I think. Um, you know, at a technical level, coexistence is automatic, right? That's, that's the nature of IP. It's, it's like parcel delivery. You've got one truck, lots of packages, all kinds of different things in there, but it has one route. It solves uh, everyone's delivery problem. And IP is the same kind of thing. And as you already mentioned, you know, IP in other domains, there is lots of different protocols and they coexist just fine. So the issue of coexistence clearly isn't technical. Uh, there's nothing broken, nobody to fix it. What we can do though, is educate people so that the people in the building automation community and the nearby communities, the adjacent communities, um, think of building automation more in that context. And, uh, and that I think is education. It may require demonstration, um, you know, seeing is believing sometimes. And also, the, uh, there has to be value in it, and part of the value in it is indeed the, the ability to find opportunities for identify requirements for uh, common tools and procedures and, and things like that that actually can simplify the experience of deployment and provisioning, uh, secure and, and, and maintain you know, building automation systems in complex environments where there are multiple protocols for good reason. Right, those protocols exist because they're needed. And uh, putting them on IP and then showing people the value of doing that in a common way uh, is the thing that IP Bliss can do that individually is much harder for us to do. So coexistence seems to be the key, but what else do we need? Uh, are, there, are there other things besides just, just focusing on coexistence that, uh, uh, that, that the group is going to address? Maybe France again uh, to give an answer. Indeed, it will not be sufficient to only create awareness amongst the different manufacturers of the associations for the IP for building automation use. IP Plus will also have to uh, converge on common requirements for network layer security so that the building administrator can rely on the same basis regardless of which application layer protocol is used in the building automation product connected to the same IP network. As already explained, different offerings out of different sources will be integrated in one building. And the most important point is to give the administrator the possibility to use the offering in the market without uncertainty in the security direction. Or is it a point it clearly out? IP Bliss would not be able to uh, unilaterally decide on own security requirements. The IP Bliss initiative will have to leverage standards in line with the regulations applicable in the different regions in the world. And these regions are 
to, to name the three big, Europe, US, Asia, and in Asia, China as an, uh, let's say, big animal therein. Thanks, Ron. So, good answer. Uh, so there's more to it than just uh, convergence over IP. You, you got to go into security and, and uh, other related areas. Um, the, the, I want to drill into uh, kind of the elephant in the room here, which is is uh, if you look at OCF and KNX and DACnet, um, these are all application layers that are that are mature and well established. Will IP Bliss create a new protocol? Um, for example, and I'll contrast with, with uh, Project CHIP here, IP Bliss and CHIP have similar goals of migrating control systems to IP, uh, whereas Project CHIP is consumer focused where you're targeting commercial buildings. So is it correct to think of IP Bliss as the commercial building equivalent of Project CHIP? Hey Bill, this is uh, Tobin Richardson with Zigbee Alliance. That's probably a good one for me to take on. Uh, so the simple answer is no, it's, uh, it, it isn't really the equivalent. It's really establishing coexistence on IP of those protocols. So, uh, you know, the due to IP, it's easier to use multiple protocols in a deployment scenario, uh, avoiding specific hardware needs. Uh, and the integration could really be done on the application and uh, software level and you get the benefit that uh, same device hardware and network infrastructure can support multiple uh, protocols. And that's really the whole point of, of IP. Um, interesting point on Project Chip. It's pro uh, a lot of the early media around that was uh, Smart Home. The name Project Connected Home uh, over IP is uh, uh, gives it the you know the impression. But we have companies like uh, Schneider Electric involved that are you know really driving the commercial component of that. So you can almost call that uh, commercial and home over IP if you wanted to rename it. Um, but but really the focus there is. Uh, uh, really as an additional application level protocol. And, and that's uh, where CHIP is creating that new standard, IP Bliss is not. Um, so a natural comparison, but uh, hopefully we can uh, make that fairly clear that really uh, CHIP is targeting interoperability, IP Bliss is targeting coexistence, uh, and uh, CHIP is really a new organization within the Zipi Alliance, whereas IP Bliss really leverages uh, existing ones. Hopefully that's helpful there. That's an excellent answer. Thank you for putting that up. Uh, that's a question I get all the time, and, and uh, that's that's a really succinct answer. Um, but but uh, if you look at the devices themselves, um, some are IP today and some are not. Uh, do we really need IP all the way to the end node? Uh, what are the advantages of of uh, converting everything all the way to the smallest of devices to uh, to IP? And is it really necessary to do that, or are or, or, uh, or gateways going to be here forever to, to, to do the, the uh, um, IP uh, protocol translation? Yeah, Bill, maybe that's a good question for Threat Group here, as we are an IP end node, which really is uh, on the very much uh, end uh, of that network, uh, the low power devices. Um, I think it, there's functionality aspects to it, there's cost aspects to it, uh, and maybe also security aspects to it. Um, it may seem uh, simple to have dedicated networks for different applications in the first place, because it avoids um, interdependencies, um, it's like separation of trades, but you actually pay the bill later. Um, when, you, when you grow your network, when you have the desire that these things are somehow interoperating, talking to each other, or uh, internet connectivity, internet-based services are required, then all of a sudden um, uh, managing all these uh, gateways which are needed uh, to facilitate this interaction with other parts of the network uh, can be really very expensive. Um, all these gateways which translate from one language to the other language, uh, which uh, connect the networks uh, to the internet, uh, they need to be updated, uh, they always need to have the latest um, uh, security updates. They need to, uh, you know, be aware of the latest changes in the in the language itself uh, of the ecosystem. Actually, of the multiple ecosystems uh, when it uh, translates one to each other. And uh, very important also, um, a gateway translates, uh, so it must be able to understand, uh, meaning decrypt also uh, the data content. So these gateways must be trusted by all the ecosystems and by all the companies involved. I think we will also always have 
uh, a certain content of proprietary uh, things in the buildings um, and and um, you know uh, connectivity solutions in the buildings. Um, so trusting all these gateways and making sure that all this works over a long time is really expensive, and and it's 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 a specialist task. Yeah? Uh, commercial buildings are long living uh, systems. Uh, you cannot afford that something breaks in your critical infrastructure. Uh, so you want to make sure that you base something, uh, these things in the building on very solid standards and on a concept which is really future proof in terms of security. And this is this is IP. I mean, it is IP in the internet and it will be IP also in the buildings. And we cannot exclude the end nodes here uh, because the weakest point in, in the network uh, breaks the security. That's clear. So if you don't have it on the endpoint, um, then then you know, you give up uh, the benefit. Um, IP protocol has proven security concepts, and most important, it allows for end-to-end -end security. So you don't need to trust all the middleware and all the other components which don't belong to the system you are managing. Um, with end-to-end -end security, you can uh, have trust uh, that uh, the information arrives where it should arrive. Another aspect to it is is really the range. Um, as IP allows coexistence of different um, architectures and um, uh, application um, and, and you know ecosystems on the same network, it allows you that uh, these different applications use the same uh, infrastructure, networking infrastructure. So let's say you have an application which is densely populated in the building, you have another one which is less densely populated in the building. Um, uh, the less densely populated could always have an issue to be reached and to be in radio range of the next device, uh, especially when uh, uh, you know the power requirements are more stringent and uh, standby power regulations get stronger. Uh, you cannot uh, infinitely increase your your send power, um, so you depend on mesh networking, and mesh networking really depends on uh, a dense enough network. So your less dense application may uh, really benefit from the more dense application even if these applications don't really need to talk to each other because they're really in a different application domain at least they route the traffic for each other and that's a huge benefit uh, that uh, really makes it uh, much easier and also more reliable and in the end also more over the long run more cost efficient uh, if all the nodes run ip can I just pick no, up on that? Oh, so sorry, just the um, there's an aspect here where you, just by sets, I, I talked about IP layers. Really, the IP is one layer, but the, the, the advantage is it sits above a lot of other layers. Um, you've got thread, you've got Wi-Fi, you've got wired, you've got so by by converging on IP, you get to leverage a lot of technologies that are being developed at a much greater scale across multiple vertical markets. It's not just um, smart building. Right, and um, we all look forward to the day when uh, routers replace gateways uh, across uh, multiple industries, uh, from residential all the way to uh, commercial buildings. Um, but security keeps coming up. Uh, we, we keep talking about um, security as as a as, as a benefit here, but at the same time, IP Bliss is not defining the technical specification for how to accomplish that. So, how are you going to do that? How, how are you going to um, how are you going to provide a, a an improvement in uh, in security uh, through through the actions of IP Bliss? I'm happy to, to take that one, David. Here, uh, so I think one of the key points is. Common security doesn't necessarily mean new security. There are a lot of security protocols out there. Um, but in getting all of these upper layer protocols running on that same IP lower layer, one of the reasons you're doing that is to um, enable systems to communicate with each other, um, the, the real higher layer control layer more easily. Uh, you want to make sure, as Arne said, that you've got everyone up to the same standard. Uh, your security chain is only as good as its weakest link, so we want to make sure that everybody is um, up to the necessary security level. Uh, that's one of the first things. And the other thing is that there are certain elements of security where it would be good if you can standardize. We don't necessarily need to create something new, but for example, uh, good security is typically 
uh, based on strong identity. Um, so it would be useful if a lot of the uh, protocols involved can use a compatible form of identity, um, ideally maybe even the same form of identity that uh, doesn't overlap with each other so that the higher layer systems um, aren't gonna get in any way confused, um, but they can also uh, just use the same method of identifying devices. So just aligning on those sorts of things um, is gonna make it a lot easier for everybody involved in the entire ecosystem. Um, but it doesn't mean we're necessarily creating something new. We can just align on a uh, particular approach across all the different protocols. Okay. Uh, we'll be watching this aspect of IP Bliss very carefully because I think a lot of people are, are confused about how that's going to actually work in practice. But uh, conceptually, it's, it, it's, uh, it seems solid. Um, I'd like to return back to this, this idea of, uh, of, of what's going on at the application layer. Um, lots of, well, many industry standards have attempted to, to uh, come up with kind of a common semantic representation of data um, independent of, um, uh, of, of underlying application protocols. In other words, convergence of application protocols could be a potential benefit. So for example, if you have a, uh, a thermometer representing a temperature, um, that representation is the same across uh, multiple devices. But coexistence doesn't necessarily require that. So um, has the industry moved beyond thinking that, that full stack convergence is, is, is required here? And, and uh, are, are you guys now thinking that it's not necessary that, that instead just simply coexistence of, of multiple application layers uh, is the future. Yeah, Bill, uh, um, I can I can speak to that. Um, yeah, I, I think um, there is maybe a, a trend uh, to do application layer convergence, uh, but it's not that this happens overnight. It's really very difficult to do that especially in commercial buildings, uh, backwards compatibility is really extremely important. All these application layers have their specific strengths, their, their membership, uh, their products. Um, it's not something you can, you can just do. And I think indeed the industry has moved a little beyond that thinking. Not that we give up on, on, on trying to you know, harmonize things, but it's really a first step um, uh, to bring all these products on the same network such that they you know can exchange information through software software which you know fulfills the task of uh, having one ecosystem talk to each other on the same network these software can really be uh, something running on a pc it's not needed to have a box uh, which has two different radios or something because it's ip so it's also in a way a move into away from hardware into software for this type of uh, um, interoperability, and and this then I think it enables convergence on the on the long run. Um, convergence is is always uh, something which uh, you know is is more evolutionary than it's it's a revolution. Um, you know, bringing up that yet another new standard which solves all the problem is is proven unsuccessful. Um, Again, not to give up on that target. I think we should all fight for that and fight for for best coverage in all these uh, organizations. But um, to to facilitate that uh, is really the best way um, uh, to move on the same fundament of networking first, and then you know let this grow, and also not stop allow uh, innovation. Uh, often things start out of proprietary protocols, and then they later go into standardization. If you try to fix everything at once, then you also block this innovation. So um, I think, yes, uh, the industry is moving a little bit beyond that. And, and uh, without giving up on, on trying to avoid unnecessary variation and really try to converge, it also allows coexistence and, and makes it more practical with that. Um, I hope Got that it. So it's, it's really a, a, a matter of uh, sequencing things. So first we have the connectivity, then we have the communication technologies that we need operating uh, commercial scale underneath to allow um, application protocols to more naturally converge. Uh, is, is, that, is that the right way to look at this? 
Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. It's it's really a stepwise approach. First, you need to consolidate on the network. If you do not accomplish that, then you have no way to agree on on common uh, um, language because you always have this barrier of hardware and translation on the network layer. So, you know, starting with that, uh, I think is really the right approach. This is Andy. Let me add just another word to that because I think it's important to remember that a harmonization is valuable only for things that are in common. It wouldn't help us much to integrate file transfer protocols with video streaming protocols because they're trying to do something different. And part of the challenge here is to understand where the application protocols exist because the application actually is doing something different. And, and there's value in having a protocol component at the application layer that addresses that. So pure convergence might not ever be the goal if the application isn't actually uniform. And I think we find lots of technical people in the building automation space that would say there are indeed sub applications within that large world uh, that might benefit from maintaining application layer uh, specific and unique characteristics uh, that we find in the various protocols. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, let's let's uh, let's shift gears again here. Uh, one of the first things that happen when you deploy any new device into a uh, home or a building or whatever is is uh, the initial provisioning problem, and it. It's, it's worth spending some time thinking about this because that initial provisioning is often a huge barrier, particularly in industrial situations where you're installing dozens or hundreds or even thousands of things uh, in a short period of time. You want to automate this stuff as, as much as you can. Uh, and, and this is also a huge security hole if it's not done correctly. So are you gonna address this, the, the provisioning problem specifically as part of your, your approach to uh, the security, or or uh, are you just simply depending on the underlying device networks like Thread uh, to um, somehow evolve so that their onboarding um, is is, uh, is is easier and and uh, more standard across uh, across network? Yeah, Bill um, Arno again. Um, I I think yes, uh, um, this will happen. Um, when any of the projections about the amount of devices in IoT uh, go in the right direction, then it's just the sheer amount of these devices which will require a more automated process uh, for onboarding. And you know, bringing devices to the network is really a completely different thing than provisioning the application. The application uh, requires specific application knowledge and uh, you know, people who are coming from that product category, while the onboarding can be stronger optimized and we see this uh, these standards and these proposals uh, already on the horizon and uh, this group really can can discuss that and try to agree on something which we want to commonly follow so yes i think it will be i mean of course onboarding is something which the network layers have to manage uh, but there is common concepts uh, available and um, i believe we will converge in that direction and make the um, the onboarding, uh, the the network layer security thing really something which is uh, more optimized uh, and is less bothersome for the people who then care about the application commissioning. So um, yeah, it's 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 a very important question uh, also for this group um, because uh, the commissioning experience uh, will be key. Uh, today there's a, a lot of manual operating. Um, and, you know, in non-IP scenario, you anyway have to do everything a little bit different in every technology um, and later then converge it on the IP network. So it's really worth investing here some time and think about these scenarios. And I, I deeply believe because there is a market for it and there's a demand for it, there will also be solutions. Um, and in this group, uh, we can we can start uh, agreeing on that and make sure that uh, the network layer is being used here. Um, um, you know, serve the needs of all the applications on top. Thanks, Harold. Appreciate that. Um, I, I'd like to return to, to the gateway issue just for a second. A very short answer here is, is really all I'm looking for. Um, is, is it really realistic to replace gateways with routers and, and in what time frame? I'm happy to take that. Um, 
yes, it absolutely is realistic. That is our goal, um, that you will be able to just translate between protocols with a piece of software, and all the hardware is going to be standard. Um, it's just going to be IP layers. Uh, in the short term, in fact, the long term for brownfield deployments where you're upgrading, yes, you are going to need gateways still. Um, but we would love to get to the point as quickly as possible where for a greenfield deployment, uh, yeah, you can just deploy your IP hardware and uh, any gateways are going to be just done in software. I'm really happy to hear that. I, I really think that this is a game changer for the industry. Just to quit thinking that you got to put a, that you absolutely must put a, uh, a gateway between your devices and applications that use them. So, uh, so this is, I, I think, one of the most important things you guys are, are contributing. And um, just a couple more questions. Um, the the we talk a lot in uh, analysts like me. We talk a lot about um, IT and OT departments, um, where they get along and where they don't. Um, IoT deployments in buildings uh, tend to involve both IT and OT. Uh, how's that going to work uh, with IP Bliss, and and uh, which group is uh, uh, is going to drive it, do you think? Well, this is Andy. Um, I think both groups will drive it as they continue to learn the benefits. Responsibilities of each are going to vary a little bit by organization. I mean, IT is going to generally be more responsible for the physical network up to routing and transport maybe, and, and uh, OT is going to generally be re more responsible for working with at least application layer protocol. But both have them benefit. Right? And uh, you know, IT gains their operational efficiency and their full network visibility, which allows them to do their job, which is to ensure there's a reliable, secure communications platform for their organization. And it allows them to use common tools, which makes them uh, better able to do their job effectively and efficiently. OT, on the other hand, gains a lot too, because they get that stability and security that comes with IT platforms, and they do get lower costs because they're offloading network design management and maintenance on the group that does that all the time, every day, and uh, takes it out of the OT budget. So I think both win, and as they learn how they both win, they're both gonna wanna go there faster. Final question, we're almost out of time, guys. Um, how can people participate in IP Bliss? How, how, do, you, how do you join, how do you, how do you help? Yeah, well, I'll take that. This is uh, Tobin uh, again from Zigbee Alliance, and um, you know, I think uh, the, the answer is fairly straightforward on that one. If you are already a member of one of the participating organizations, and you can hear from the uh, great uh, in-depth uh, discussions that we've just had on these on these questions, uh, just all you have to do is uh, jump on in. Um, so if you're already a member of, of uh, BACnet, KNX, OCF, Threadgroup, or Zigbee Alliance, you're in. You just need to show up, uh, you know, reach out to one of us and, and we'll, we'll get you linked in. Otherwise, if you're not yet one of uh, part of one of those five organizations, uh, now's a good time to join. Um, and uh, uh, so you're welcome to come into any of our organizations and that will get you the, the quick intro into, into IP Bliss. Okay, great. Thanks, Tobin. And with that, I'd like to thank our distinguished panel and to thank all of you for attending our webinar. And uh, thanks for all the great questions uh, the audience submitted during the Q&A. Uh, the panel will address these questions. We're out of time now. We can't do it live. Uh, the panel will address these questions and post the answers on the ipbliss.org uh, website. Also, a recording of the webinar will be posted to that website uh, shortly. So uh, with that, uh, thanks again, everybody, and thanks to all of you for listening. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, and bye-bye. Thanks.